answer and walk you through the three simple steps of transferring your existing 401k or IRA into a precious metals IRA at Life is Legal to further protect your assets from market instability. Pick up the phone and call U.S. Money Reserve at 
Dr. Jones. They have a call. There hasn't been a second call. Why would they take the jewelry? And I'll give us a job. Let's go back to the beginning. Where was Jody taken from? From Marshall Arts and Rest. Yeah, about four hours ago. We need the address. Okay, all right. Let's get this party started, right, right. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm, Angel Snup Nup Seven. I am your soul brother, number one. I just wanna make a quick commentary a response in regard to a uh, live stream that I listened to uh, yesterday. And if you are interested, of which you, you should be interested, otherwise you cannot follow uh, this commentary. The uh, third annual United Nations uh, uh, Reparations Side Event. They had it yesterday. A person of whom I associate with back and forth, I guess he's affiliated with uh, a brother that has his own faction of the Nation of Islam. He follows behind Silas Muhammad. And he sent me this link to listen to their uh, conference and the topic, of course, reparations. <clears throat> And we want to talk about that real quick. Now, it's mind boggling to me that people want you and suggest that you listen to them, but they won't listen to you. I don't mind listening. I mean, it does not hurt me to listen to somebody. It does not cost me any money to listen to somebody, except a little time. And I listened to this for two hours. In fact, really, I wanted to, uh, I could have waited longer, listened longer, but they did not take question and answer or none of that. They said what they had to say and got out of Dodge City. It's mind boggling, again, that people want you to listen to them to continue to repeat the same thing we've been hearing for the last 50 years or more. The same thing. but we don't want to listen to that which is fresh, that which is new. Because we've already heard this, we've already done this. That's what I want to talk about. Even so, 
the only way I can sincerely comment on this conference is because I listened to it. If I did not listen to it, I honestly cannot comment on it because I did not listen to it. There are those who have the nerve to comment on me and they want to debunk something I say or they want to argue and debate our vision called the Mississippi campaign when they never listen to us. That's why they, their facts, their so-called facts is not straight. They don't know what the hell they're talking about because they really don't know. They don't really take the time to really listen and look stupid. I invited the brother to clarify some things. And I invited the brother, any representative that would like to come here and, and speak on this, welcome to come. They don't never come. I will come on your channel. You can come here. It don't make any difference to me because I know that I can explain and I can defend this position. You're not going to do that because you know you can't. I don't fear. I can listen to a preacher, a Christian preacher all day long. I can listen to a Muslim preacher all day long. I can listen to any of these YouTube personnel all day long. I can listen to them. That's why I can talk about you because I listen to you. Also, I have no problem when I listen and I hear something, a message that is true. I said, wow, they got it going on. I can get with that. I can say I'm in error. I can say I don't know. But if it don't make sense to me, I'm going to explain to you why it don't make sense. And then you can explain to me why it does make sense. But you already know it doesn't make sense. It's just something that you believe in and we get emotional over things. So I listened to this conference and the first thing I noticed, I thought it was about reparations. And it is, but it's reparations with the religious thing, the honorable Silas Muhammad. How many honorable people that we need? All these honorable people and our condition has not changed. We have all the divine, all the spiritual, all the honorables, and our condition don't change nothing. I'm watching this conference and I see a bunch of elderly people trying to hold on to a dream and perhaps the youngest was the guest speaker or whatever um Malik Malik Shaba Malik Zulu Shaba I don't really know too much about him uh, he's affiliated with the Black Panthers, and I remember he had some kind of relationship with Khalid Muhammad. But all these persons are trying to rekindle something from the past. And the main figurehead is the Honorable Silas Muhammad. And Silas Muhammad, I don't know how old he is, but Clearly, he's going through some type of mental health problems, physical problems. He could barely talk. But they still trying to push this. And it didn't work in all your lifetime. And you steady to your deathbed trying to push this narrative. I'm like, I'm just shaking my head. It's, it's really, really sad. All these supposed to be elders, all of them in the past. All of them 
on this road to nowhere that has not gotten them anything. See, this is, this is the thing. They keep talking about the work and they trying to make it like they really doing something. I travel over here to, to Geneva, Switzerland, and we travel over here to Ghana, Africa, and we go to Nigeria, and you doing all that traveling, you doing all that to produce what? Out of all these years, you got what? They have nothing except a conference, a side event. I would assume a side event has nothing to do with the United Nations. You're just using that title. They don't know nothing about you. And when I listen to them, it sounds like the United Nations don't know anything about them. Nobody's shown no affiliation to the United Nations, but they're using that word. They're using that organization, United Nations. I'm listening and I don't hear a program. What do you want from the United Nations? They don't, they don't outline what is it that you want. They don't specify, do you want reparations, individual payments, uh, to certain nations, how do you want this distributed? What do you want and, and what nation, who's supposed to pay these reparations? You go into the United Nations and you wanna to talk to, you, to the United Nations with no clear, specific agenda, no type of real proposal. How you gonna go somewhere? I don't know how many of you have done this, how many of you have ever applied for grant money? When you apply for grant money, you got to tell them specifics. What you going to buy? What you going to do? How you going to do? They want to know everything. When it comes to us, we have no, what's the word? Specific, specific I can't pronounce the word. We're not specific about anything. <laughs> Specificity. <laughs> We're not specific about it. We have no agenda. We just know, we just get, we just emotional over things. We have not really thought things through. And you represent, you go into the United Nations to represent black folks, and you ain't asked black people nothing. They want to go to the United Nations and represent the black man and woman in America, foundation of black Americans, freedmen in America. They want to go to the United Nations and represent us with a bunch of people that don't have nothing to do with us and put us all in the same category under this name called Afro descendants or something like that. And we know that Afro it is a hairstyle. So if you have an afro, I guess you, if you can grow an afro, I guess everybody related. Their reparation involves everybody. And I cannot get with that. Because it's already confusing. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody should not be getting reparations for my ancestors suffering. And they don't have nothing to do with it. Their suffering, their reparations should be only to, in regards to their situation, not mine, not ours. We know who we should be targeting for reparations. The United States of America and those businesses who are still in business that benefited from our ancestors suffering. Not only slavery, 
but Jim Crow and the black codes and the Tuskegee experiment. And of course, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre. And it could go on and on. These people in foreign lands don't have nothing to do with that. It's not wise to put all our struggles in one basket because we're not the same. However, our struggle, if successful, could open the door to help others. Now, if they are willing to help us get ours, then uh, we should help them get theirs. I agree with that. But to put it all in one basket is confusing because everybody's situation is different. And the people that need to pay these reparations are different. But what I hear is more begging. They don't have a plan. They don't have no goal. They don't know exactly. They just, I'm going to go to the United Nations and ask, ask, ask them to do what? Do, do they have the power to do anything? But to me, you you begging. This is why the Mississippi campaign is important. The Mississippi campaign is important because you put yourself in a position of power. These little ragtag groups that we make, the United Nations or nobody don't give a damn. However, if you took control of a state like Mississippi, now you acting, now you have power and influence. as a state you also are in a, in a position you've never been before and you can just get your reparations whether they like it or not through this state because you now control the funds of this state you don't have to send no money to the federal government unless they negotiate with you on the things that's important to you. Well, I, I guess the money that's supposed to go to the federal government from the state of Mississippi, I guess uh, it's going to be delayed or it might not come to you at all. That's the kind of power you have now. You cannot go before nobody. Now, they did say something about a lobbyist. You, yeah, you have to have a lobbyist. But being a state, you will develop a lobby in the federal government. You are actually would do better taking control of the state than begging the United Nations. They can't do nothing for you like that. Also, we know that this country, this nation, the United Nations don't mean nothing to them. So why are you begging the United Nations when these people fear the United States itself? They don't care. We have to develop a new way of doing things. We have to look at things differently. I'm looking and hearing all these older persons, they stuck in the past. Their mindset is stuck on a strategy that has proven don't work. I want to ask them, how long you been doing this? I'm going to say this, we're going to get out of here. It's simple as this, uh, so brothers and sisters. It's simple as this.
How many of you drive for Uber Eats? Whenever you drive for Uber Eats, you get a certain amount of money for each delivery. So there's a benefit. Every time you drive those miles, there's a benefit. This is no different. I hear these people talk about how they traveling, they going over here. I mean, it, it, it sounds impressive. But they never talk about, well, we, I traveled to such and such, and I, I, and I got this. And I, we traveled over here, and I got that. They don't talk about the benefit. It's just like the, the friendship tour Louis Farrakhan had back in uh, 1995, 90, uh, 96, that, that friendship tour. I forgot when it was. And Louis Farrakhan got on an airplane, a ship or whatever, and went to all the different Muslim countries, including Iraq, Saddam Hussein, was living at the time, and, uh, and of course, Libya, and went all over it, went to Iran or whatever. I'm doing this to do what? I'm traveling, spending this money, shaking these hands to get what? And he came back to the United States, Minister Farrakhan came back to the United States to tell us what he got, what he got. They gave me the key to the country. They gave me the key to the city. They gave me a fur coat. They gave me a gold bar. They, they gave you, you went all over the earth to get some trinkets. You, you got nothing. That was a waste of time. You didn't achieve anything. Except accolades for yourself. Oh, they respect you so much uh, overseas, blah, blah. What, what do that do for the black man and woman in America? This conference yesterday was nothing but a bunch of talk about the history and bragging about how they travel. Uh, yeah, you, you got your little money together. It's called perpetrating a fraud. Because you're not really doing it. You want to make yourself look like you're doing something, but you get nothing. What's the sense of doing all that and there's you get nothing in return? That's why some men don't think it's fair that they take a woman out on a date and don't do a little something, something because I'm paying for all this. What's the benefit? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what it's all about. You go to work. There's a benefit for your work. Paycheck every Friday, every two weeks, whatever. Whenever you invest, whenever you put work into something, there's supposed to be some type of benefit. You want us to continue to invest in a strategy, in a mindset that is not paying no dividends. That's the reason why I cannot get with that. And you don't even know what the hell you want. Not really. I have yet to hear these people specify, make clear, this is how we want, this is what we want, want done. You don't even know what the hell you want. It's all emotion. So you shouldn't get on nothing like that. It is wise that we do avoid that. Again, I could be in error. I'm not that smart. I only have a high school education. I really don't know. I, I've never been to G Geneva, Switzerland. I've never been to Ghana and, and, and the Congo and, and Paris, France. I don't know. But you know what I do have? I have common sense. And I know when you invest, when you're doing something, there got to be a payoff. When people play the lottery, it may never pay off, but you know that it can. You might be the lucky winner. Is this a lottery that y'all got going? You keep paying and maybe one day, 
the jackpot might come in. Is that what y'all doing? Because if that's what you, that's called gambling. And we shouldn't want to gamble. We should want to know when I make this investment, we going it's going to pay off cuz I'm going to make it pay off. Clearly, you don't know what you're doing. And that's not my fault. I say that we need to try something different. And if you don't want to do nothing different, you want to keep putting on these shows, this edutainment, keep doing what dead folks done in the past that did not work, that's your business. But don't come around me with that dumb ass stuff. Because I got to be honest with you. It don't work. And the only reason why there's an angel snuffing up seven is because it don't work. We got to do things different. We should be tired of losing. It's time for us to win. Straighten up your life. Straighten up yourself. Think for yourself. Be original. Stop being a damn beggar. You don't have to beg. Use your brain. There's many tools that we can use. Take advantage of these things. If you, God, then prove it. You keep talking all this, I'm a black man as a God. You ain't did nothing on the level of a God. You are God, but you beg in the United Nations. You got to beg folks for reparation. What kind of God are you? You are God and you got to pray to God. What kind of God are you? Black man is God, but you got to get down and pray to somebody. What kind of God are you? A wimpy God, a pathetic God. It's just smoke and mirrors, like as they say. It's not real. You want to keep going down that way? That's your business. And that brother or anybody can come here. You can show us that that way is the best way. Come here and show us. I'll be ha I'll be happy to listen. But we're not fools here. Won't you try something different? I've yet to hear nothing more realistic and more wiser than the Mississippi campaign. <laughs> How you doing, brother Tracy? Tracy said, Tracy said, a God that can't pay his electric bill. A God that got to get on a, on another man's airplane and fly around. A God that has to use the white man's internet, the white man's Facebook, the white man's uh, 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 YouTube. You God. You can't even make any gas to put in your car, Mr. God. Nothing but feel good stuff. We got to keep it real. If you don't keep it real, you're damn sure you're just not going to get anywhere. You just can't. I'm not here to make mockery. I'm not here to, to put nobody down. Those things don't work. I'm not here to kiss your little knee. Make you feel good. If you can't play basketball, I'm going to tell you unless you show me different. Man, you can, bruh, you can hang it up. You can't, you can't play no ball. You just, you just can't. Oh, I, I can. My daddy, my daddy played in the NBA and my granddad, but you cannot play basketball, bruh. You don't know what the hell you talking about. He can play basketball. His, his grandmama played in the, the WNBA and he cannot play ball. 
Y'all don't like to lie to people. Like we like to, it's better to be silent than, than really to tell the truth because most people can't handle the truth. Some of your friends have baby and you lie telling them that that child look cute and you think, really think the child is ugly. To you, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. See, I have no comment because I know because I don't, because most people, you don't have the right to tell the truth because people get upset. If you think the baby cute, that's your business. I might not think that way. I let the child look all right. Child not cute to me. Terry Ellis is cute to me. I like Terry Ellis. I think she's cute. I think she's fine. You might not think that. That's fine. That's cool. That's not going to change my mind because to me, the woman is fine to me. And you can, that's your, if that's how you feel, you think she looks like a monster, that's cool. I'm not going to get upset. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. We can't be true to each other. We can't tell the truth because it hurts people's feelings. You can call me ugly. I don't give a, don't bother me none. Because at the same time somebody called me ugly, somebody else said, damn, Talit fine as hell. It don't bother me none. Beauty is an eye of the beholder. We can't even be truthful to one another. Because it hurt our feelings. But that's the way it is with you. You got to be honest. That's why our relationship, our relationships don't go well. No, we can't be truthful with one another. Tell me the truth. Don't kiss my ass. Because you really don't mean it. That's why these relationships fall apart. Tell the truth. It will hurt you for a few minutes and go about and keep rolling. We will be better off telling the truth. And in religion, they keep talking about all the hypocrites. You have all these hypocrites because people cannot be truthful. You can go to church and say, I, 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 I believe, but you know, I'm sort of iffy. People look at you funny. You got what's wrong with that? What's wrong with going to church and you really not feeling it, but you go to church? Uh, you a hypocrite. You this, and then people start talking about you. I'm being truthful about myself. I'm being truthful with you. It's not going to be a good outcome when we lie and we're not truthful with one another. Assalamu alaikum, Lunch Break Chronicles. Assalamu alaikum. People want me to go back to the nation of Islam, which I shouldn't have been there to begin with. Why would you want? me to go back to the nation of Islam and I'm talking the way I do. I'm not going to change. Why would you want me to be in your ranks? Why would you want me to be around you? I'm not you. I'm not that. I don't believe that. But this is how folks are. I'm not that anymore. Like some of these people, when you learn that your child is homosexual, I can't, you, you can't accept it. You don't believe it. The child is homosexual. Oh, uh, that's, I can't believe that. And you get all angry and upset or whatever. And people got to be in the closet. I mean, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Who knows how many people are homosexual still in the closet. They are afraid to come out and be who they are because that's who they are. It's simple as that. <laughs> Here go lunch break. He ready to
Why don't you come over here and teach us a little bit? Uh, Lunch break said the teachings of the of the all these honor. Oh, here we go. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We got all these honorable people. Honorable Minister Farrakhan. Honorable Silas Muhammad. Everybody honorable, and our condition has not changed. All these divine people. All this spirituality. We got God on our side. This is 2024. Look at your condition. The teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad can change the way you think, brother. The teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad came from a foreigner. I don't want to think that way. I shouldn't be thinking that way. Religion. Religion means to bind. Religion means slavery. It is not freedom. It is not justice. It's, it's not equality. If it was equality, while Elijah Muhammad lived lavishly and the average brother and sister was struggling. That's not equal. If it was equal, how come Elijah Muhammad the only one they can give the Savior's Day address. None of, none of the other believers, nobody else can do it. Every Savior's Day, we're going to listen to the honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's not equality. It had to come from a foreigner because you are a slave. You need somebody to follow. You ain't smart enough. God don't give a damn about you. You always going to be a slave. You always going to be sniffing somebody else's backside. You always going to be eating somebody else's leftovers. We don't do that here. You going to give me my due respect or you going to get the hell out of here. We ain't following nobody. We don't need your God. We depend on ourselves. We don't need that. Freedom, justice, and equality. And what you need a messenger for? Let's talk about these teachings. What you need a messenger for when God is here? If the teacher is here, what you need a substitute teacher for? What you need a messenger for? And why you didn't let the people know you was God when you was here? Your scary ass left, and now this man running around, that was God. How we know? Because he wasn't teaching that prior. Then he leave. Never to be seen again. Never to be seen again. I'm going to do a Dr. Umar Johnson. Never to be seen again. You, you. You don't find, you don't have a problem with that? There's a problem with that. What you need a messenger for when God is here? And then they say in the teachings that Farah going to come back. And all this nonsense. This ring around the roses, dumb stuff. The people were not ready at that time. You ain't ready now. You will never be ready. So you ready this time? Where far Muhammad at then? Come on, let's break. Come on, where's it? You come here. You on the, come to Angel Snub Nub 7. I mean, come to Realities Took on Earth, Internet Ministry, chat room, and hit this link. You come here and explain this to us. I'll let you talk. I want you to explain. You're a slave. We allow ourselves to be a slave. You were not ready at that time. That ain't nothing but an excuse. But when you gonna get ready? Because you ain't ready now. When, when are you gonna get ready? Master Masa, Masa WD Ford is the architect and pilot of the mother plane. You ain't never seen no mother plane. Where is the mother plane at? 
Is it in Arizona? North Dakota? Is it in China? Where's the mother plane at? When the last time you see Master Farad Muhammad? I'm not calling nobody Masa. These, this man not even related to you. These people can come and tell the, the Negro anything and we go for it. Much respect to Marcus Garvey, but he was a foreigner. He come over here and we gobble it up. We believe anything anybody say. We don't think about nothing. He said people see the mother plane all the time. What people? Nobody see no mother plane all the time. You talk about UFOs. UFO means unidentified flying object. We are the members of the tribe of Shabbat. There's no, there's no evidence of no tribe of Shabbat. Where they at? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tracy said they can take a few of them baby airplanes and make a pretty good airline. Right, tribe of Shabbat airline. Exactly. This, we keep believing in this nonsense. We adults and keep believing in these fairy tales, this nonsense. And you know what I noticed about Malcolm X? Malcolm X just trained himself on the struggle. I don't remember, and I don't see a lot of videos talking about how he talked about the tribe of Shabazz. He talked about the mother plane. I never seen Malcolm, I never heard Malcolm really talk on those things. He concentrated on the struggle. And when he left the nation of Islam, he concentrated on the struggle. He was not running around talking about the mother plane. And when he became an or, uh, Orthodox Muslim, he wasn't talking about how Allah going to do this. He, was, he just stayed focused on the struggle. You want to believe all these fairy tales and mythology? That's your business. Malcolm taught very little about Master Farah. He didn't really talk about Farah Muhammad like that. He didn't talk about he didn't talk about Far. He concentrated on the struggle, the injustice. He didn't come out into the into the public like Farrakhan. I was listening to Farrakhan in 2010. He talked about the mother plane, his dreams. <laughs> <laughs> all this mysterious spooky stuff that was 2010 none of the stuff that y'all talking about have come true none of it none of it has come true all this ring around the roses Tom and Jerry rhetoric none of it has come true Tracy said they be looking at drones <laughs> from Walmart talking about they see a baby play the drone like five inches wide. <laughs> you can make yourself believe anything that you want to. You can have a cow flying in the sky. Oh, that's the mother plane. It's a cow. There was an explosion and animals shot up in the air. That's that's just a cow blow it up in the sky. It ain't no big deal. That's a corny example, but that's how they would look at it. Because you can't really see it, identify it. That's the mother play. It's a cow. <laughs> I can't do that. I cannot do that. I cannot advise anybody to support Anything that's not going to give you a benefit. Everything should bring you benefit. Unless you gamble. And see, that's what this stuff is. is a gamble. It's a poor gamble because thousands and hundreds of years have gone by and none of it has come true. None of it. 
What's this new pastor they trying to push? Pastor Gino Jennings or whatever. I sent him an invitation to come here or I can come to him however you want to do it. And I will show him that your Jesus Christ, your teachings, is just as wacky as Nation of Islam teaching. No reply. These folks don't want to mess with us. Lunch break says supreme wisdom is beneficial. What's supreme about it? What have you done supreme? See, it's easy to write stuff in the chat room, but you don't want to come here and face the music. You're a coward. That's cowardly. If you really believe that, you come here and you tell us in person how it's beneficial. Because my question is, Supreme wisdom is beneficial. How? What have you get? How do it benefit? What have you created? What have you done? Nothing. It's not just wisdom. You said supreme wisdom, meaning you smarter than everybody. You got something. You, you better than everybody. You smarter. You more intelligent than everybody. That's what you claim. But you don't have nothing. You can put all y'all Muslims together and Jay-Z and Beyonce who are not who are not Muslim have way more than y'all got. And they're not begging nobody from the UN to do a damn thing. The mighty don't kneel. You kneel to a, to a biracial God. What, the, what you mean you kneel? That's what Religion is about kneeling and bowing to somebody. What you mean? That's what religion is about. Bowing down to God. Bow down to Master Fraud Muhammad. Bow down to the messenger. You all on your knees. You got some, you on your knees and your hands so much, you got, you don't put holes in, in, your, in your clothes. You got to keep that in, in, what, antiseptic and keep rubbing on your hands because your, your hands and your knees is all burned away from them. Being on your knees and bowing down to somebody. Yes, it's sub, Master, Master Farah Muhammad. Yes, it's a sub, Honorable Minister Farrakhan. Yes, it's a sub, Honorable Silas Muhammad. Yes, it's a sub, y'all. Yes, it's a sub. Yes, it's a sub, Master. Yes, it's a sub. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> now, contrary to popular belief, even during my time, how I talk, there's people. That was trying to do that with me. I'm like, don't I? I cut that real quick. Don't do that with me. Plus, I know you can't hang with me. I'm too real for you. But see, whether I like it or not, I make some folks feel good. It's feel good rhetoric to them. That's not my purpose. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I, no matter, it don't make any difference. And they get caught up and they start viewing me that kind of way. But I don't get caught up in that. I'm not the honorable nothing. I'm not special. I'm not divine. I'm none of that. And then these people have hundreds and hundreds of people that follow them and y'all can't produce a damn thing except a bunch of talk. Everything these stars have has been given them to them by the devil. He's starting to take it all back. It's just excuse after excuse. Everything you got came from the devil. You on YouTube right now, where you think that come from? You driving a car, where you think that come from? You don't build nothing. The water you drink came from the devil. You don't have no system to bring you water. You didn't build your house. What world are these people living in? The money in your pocket, the credit card you got. What you talking about? You living in Lulu La La Land somewhere. Everything these stars have given to them by the devil. Everything you got came from a devil. 
What do you have didn't come from the devil? Almost 100% of everything in our house came from the Mr. Devil. This is the devil's world. What other world? What you mean this is the devil's world? Well, get out of it then. It don't make any sense. The, 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 see, this is the mindset. This is the devil's world. You've been talking that for over 100 years. His time is up. His time was up back in 1913, 18, whatever it was. And since the United States keep rolling on, oh, God gave them an extension. How many extensions do they need? You don't know when nobody's time is up. You can't put a time on unless you, you plan on killing somebody. Now, if you plan, if you think that you bad enough to take America out, you can say, oh, that time is up because you know you have the power to take them out like these people that's on death row. Like right here in the state of Missouri, they just killed an inmate. His time was up. Governor Parsons said, your time is up. I'm not going to give you a, a, what the, a reprieve. His time was up and he's gone. You ain't in no position to tell nobody that time is up. And all right, you keep keep talking about, he keep getting extensions. Because you don't have no power to do anything. Your claim is this false. His world is coming down right before. You've been saying, people have been saying the world, the devil of the world and the devil been coming for 2,000 years. His world is coming down. You ain't saying that for 2,000 years. Come on, Tracy. What's wrong with these folks? His world is going down. Every time there's a tornado, every time there's an earthquake, oh, the world is coming to an end. Still here. 2,000 years later, still here. 3,000 years later, you're going to be saying the same. No, your ass is going to be dead. Ain't gonna be no 3,000 years later for you. You're gonna be dead. Still saying the same thing. Jesus coming. The year 4,030. Jesus coming. Damn. It's been 4,000 years. Jesus ain't made it here yet. America's still going. Uh, America's falling. Damn, America's still here. You don't know. You don't have no concern. Now, if you was China and China knew that America don't know that it got a super weapon, it can say, oh, your time is over. They are in a position and they have the power to say, oh, your time is up. You don't have a pot to piss in with a fake ass God that you can't see, done ran away, and you run around talking that dumb stuff. Our Savior has arrived. I mean, you, and you ain't saved. What's wrong with us? <laughs> exactly, Tracy. People have been talking about the last days since it was the first day. Still going on. Our Savior has arrived. Jesus coming. Same stuff for thousands of years. Over and over again. I can't do it because it don't make any sense. I can't do it because I feel stupid because ain't nothing happening. But, but say for instance, if I told y'all I got a date with Terry Ellis, y'all, I got a date with Terry Ellis, some of y'all would be hated Man, that nigga pulled it up. Crazy nigga. Now, some of y'all would be hated. But you would be expecting some more news about it. You want to see, you want to see me and her with some pictures uh, on a live stream doing something to prove 
I'm telling the truth. But I just keep talking about it. I just keep talking about it, but you never see no evidence of it. And you'll be like, that nigga lying, blah, blah, blah. And you start turning your nose up at me. That nigga is a liar. But when it comes to religion, religion do the same damn thing. Jesus coming, America falling, all these claims, and nothing. And you don't question it. You keep believing in it. Why don't you believe me? I'm dating Terry Ellis. I'm, I'm me and her. We we just went to, to dinner. Why don't you believe me? You want to see some pictures. You want to see some evidence. Now, not 20. I, if I told you, I'll show you 20 years later. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear about me going on a date with Terry Ellis 20 years from now. But you do that with your religion. You keep waiting. It's going to happen thousands of years later, whatever. See, you're not real with yours. Because you would accept me if I told you I'm going out with this woman. You could say, wow, congratulations. No, you want to see evidence. You want to see it now. You don't want to see it 20 years later. But you can wait on Jesus. You can wait on these lies of the Bible and the Quran. 2,000, 3,000 years down the line. Y'all some fake, fake ass people. You're not real. And that's why I'm done with that stuff. And that's why you're going to stay in the position of a slave because that's what you are. You don't think like a slave. You think like a slave. You act like a slave. Your mind is like a slave. You don't think like a free person. I know I'm beyond a slave mind because I reject anything that bind me. I'm not following no damn God. I don't give a damn about no divine messenger. I don't give a damn about no special ass people. None of that. Nobody better than me. Tracy, don't let nobody tell you they better and more special than you are. I'm pretty sure he's not going to do it either. I will respect you. I will give you your credit for who you are, but you ain't better than me. The teachers ain't free to death. How the hell are you free? How did the teachers free you when you got to bow down to somebody? That's not freedom. You got to pray to some God five to seven times a day. You got to praise the messenger. Oh, all praises didn't tell Allah for the Amin, Allah and Muhammad. You praising these people. That's not free. How is that free? You got to obey their laws, what they say. And they can do whatever they want to, but you can't do it. Elijah Muhammad is able to do things the regular FOI can't do because he's the messenger. How the hell is that free? That's slave teaching. More slave teaching. I'm not a slave. You want to be somebody's slave? That's your business. But don't bring that to me. All praise go to praise God for what? God don't do nothing for nobody. If God was doing something for me or ever in my life, or if I seen God doing something for somebody, I will give God that credit. I don't see God doing a thing. Where is God? Where is God? Where is God in Gaza? Don't those Palestinians believe in Allah? Now they're in Gaza, all cramped up in this one spot. And these, these Israelites ready to blow them to bits. They already tore all the Palestinian territory. To, to, to rocks and, and rumble. Now they got them all bust up in what's that? Raya, whatever that place is. Where is Allah? 36,000 Palestinians dead. Where is oh Allah? I, I don't even, when you, when you watch the news, I don't even see them praying. 
I don't even see them talking about, oh, Allah, help us, Allah. La, la. I don't even see them praying because they ain't going to do them no good. You got me messed up. I don't do that. You can do that if you want to. So we was talking about this reparations conference. All these debates and conferences, that's all we do. Tracy said, they always talk about Jews but when the Jew owner of Facebook threatened to take them off Facebook, what they do? Start complaining. Exactly. Why don't your Allah keep you on Facebook? Why don't your Allah give you your own Facebook? Farrakhan and the people big enough, you can make your own Facebook. But you're going to do the same thing too because I'm pretty sure they will block me and terminate my channel on, on their version of Facebook. You're going to do the same damn thing. You're not going to let Jews or anybody else come on your Facebook talking about you. You're not going to do that. See, it's hypocrisy. All praise due to God. I would give God, I would give a monkey his credit when you show me that's what, that you earn that. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to bow down to no God. I will give Allah, Jesus, Yashara, whatever, whatever these God, all these 5,000 gods that y'all have, I will give that God the credit. But I'm not going to bow down to you, sir. I'm not going to bow down to you, man. I'd rather be dead. Slave is over for me. Now, these folks don't mind being slaves. But slavery is over for the kid. I can't do it. You bring me a glass of water, I bring you a glass of water. But I'm not going to be your slave. You don't sit around and I'm supposed to be your servant. And your 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 yo boy run around here a uh, uh, step and fletch it. I'm not doing that. I'd rather be dead. Elijah Muhammad can go get me a glass of water. I will bring him a glass of water. Farah Muhammad, go get me a glass of water. I'll bring you a glass of water. I'm not going to bow down to nobody. But that's slave teaching from foreigners. If it wasn't for translation, you couldn't even read the book. You got to put the book in English. You can't even read it because it wasn't meant for you. Meant for other, other folks. All thing you want to do, the only thing you do is brown those other people. And you get their leftovers. Why God can't come to us? God can come to all these folks, but God don't make no attempt to come to us. Always got to use a form. Why God could not be born from a black woman? The teachers talk about God, a white woman gave birth to Master Farah Muhammad. The devil. It makes no sense. It makes no, the whole thing is I can't do that no more. I, I can't do it. It's, it's, it's sickening to me. Ain't nobody going to bow down. One, all knees will bow one day, brother. I'm not bowing down. Ain't nobody going to be bowing down. You are the seed of your father. But you came from a white woman. You was developed in a white woman. She's your mother. The mother of God. It makes no sense to me. If your father is black, you are black. Whatever the hell that is. I saw a little, I seen a lot of Indian persons from India. Blacker than I am. Are they black? What you mean by black? You don't even know what the hell that, what that is. 
That's Caucasian racial classification garbage. You don't even know what that what that means. You don't even know what that is about. Just repeating, we just re regurgitate. That's why you're not gonna come here because you start crying and get all upset because you can't explain that madness. It just sounds good. But it has never been challenged. He won't come here. You won't come here live. But you know, we you can believe whatever you want to. You said Master Farad, my father, was a black man. His mama was Caucasian. She was a devil, according to the teaching. Talk about that. Master Farad Muhammad was drinking the breast of a white woman. What do you think about that? And Master Farad Muhammad looked like a white guy. Alfonso was his name. Alfonso. <laughs> we believe anything. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm done. All thing I wanted to do was reply. I just wanted to play around with Let's Break Chronicles. He, it, brother, brother or sister. I don't know whether they brother or sister. I don't know. They, they, they lost. They they lost. They out there. Brrr, Lululand. Lululand. And that's why you stay slave. Had to stay a slave. He had to have light skin so he would not be unnoticed. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> we just accept any excuses. We don't think about nothing. We just repeat and gurgitate. We just a we just a parrot. We just a slave. Ah, oh, ah, oh, Master Fry Muhammad. Ah, oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, ah, oh, Minister, the Alba Minister Farrakhan. Ah, oh, the Alba Silas Muhammad. Ah, oh, Malik, Malik. We just have our little wing, parroting anything we can. Ah, 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 we just parrots. Ah, ah. Then we get angry when somebody who can think question these things. Now, let's break. Don't get upset. But many of these folks, they get upset. They get upset over these things. We don't think. We don't think. That's not Angel Snub Nub Seven problem. Now the difference between you and me is somebody brought that to me earlier in my life. I would listen. I'm like, because see, I'm looking for things that make sense. Because I never thought about that way. I was 18, 19 years old. I never thought about the teachings that way. If somebody had brought that to me, I would have let go of the teachings a long time ago. Because it don't make sense. But I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. And really, you don't know any better. You don't know any better. But folks do get angry. They get upset. They want to kill you. That's why Malcolm is dead. Malcolm did not deserve to be murdered that way. The peaceful God. They celebrated. See, this is the thing. Uh, Islam is peace. If Islam is peace, why did you celebrate the death of this man? A man that helped your ass for 12 years. See, I, I'm done with that stuff. If There's no way I'm going to be angry at somebody that did for me like what Malcolm did for them. Whatever. I'm just going to, I have no comment. Malcolm, Malcolm can say, that I had 25 women or 30,000 women or whatever, I don't care. I have no comment. We're going to keep pushing. We thank Malcolm for his service. We thank Malcolm for what he done. And we just keep pushing. They couldn't do that. The real tyrannical, nasty person came out. Because that's who they was all the time anyway. Exactly, a bunch of ingrates. And they still ungrateful today. They try to ignore Malcolm's role in the nation of Islam. You that's you cannot ignore. There will be no Farrakhan without Malcolm and all these other people that came. These other folks wouldn't didn't bring nation of Islam the notoriety 
that Malcolm did. And he didn't have no social media. There was no Facebook and YouTube. There was no internet. Bunch of ingrates. I wouldn't even have no comment. Now, when it comes to me, there are some very nice nation of, of Islam people. They hear what I have to say. And the only thing they tell me is, brother, I thank you for your service. That's what they tell me. And leave me the hell alone. They said, brother, snuck, Talib, I thank you for your service. And that's the end of it. These other slaves, these other robots, I, I wish you would say that in my face. I, I wish I would see you on the street. These are the peace lovers. These are the peace lovers. All peaceful. We love black people. We're the peace lovers. No, you are tyrannical. You're wicked. You're nasty. You're profane. You're unjust, just like your God is. Because your God is a murderer. Your God is tyrannical. Your God is a dictator. Your God is wicked. It's not Satan, because if you look, if you really look at Satan and God, who is the real, who is the real one that's really evil? It's God. Satan not running around telling you, well, if you don't believe me, I'm gonna do this to you, and blah, blah, blah. God is the one making the threats, killing people. Lunch break said, look at all the icons the messenger produced. So, the icons produced did what? Look at your condition. So what? Produced them to do what? What, what you got? Barry Gordy produced icons, the Jackson Five, the Temptations, Donna Ross and the Supremes, and the list goes on and on. So what? So what? You produce the damn icon. So what? What you got? You don't even have lint in your pocket. You have nothing. I can't do it no more. See, when you produce, you don't have to brag about it. You don't have to talk about it. All you got to do is, when you go up and down the street, you see what we produce every day. These Caucasian people don't have to run around talking about our, the icons and stuff. You see it in, every day. Some of it you don't even know nothing about. They see it every day. Now, here come the excuse maker. Wallace. Wally destroyed everything. Why wow, him? You ain't got nothing. They always looking for an excuse for being a failure. Exactly. The church, the church has many icons. So what? You have icons exactly that don't believe in God. So what? what so what? What do it mean? But again, lunch break is not going to come here in person trying to explain. Just going to sit in a chat room and, and write stuff. Repeat the same regurgitation all the other zombies and robots been taught. That's how they respond. All of them respond in the same way. Say the same exact thing. It all comes from the same playbook. Same stuff. Wallace did this. And Malcolm did that. And the government killed. The same stuff. Same stuff all over and over. That's they trade. Like they come from a factory or something. It's pitiful. But there's nothing I can do about it. The only thing I want to do, I know there's people out there like Tracy, a lot of people like myself. We want to hear, we need, we looking for something different. And we want to do something different. 
And if we can't do anything different, we're done. Because this stuff is proven it's over. Nothing but slavery. It served its purpose in that time. But clearly, it's not doing nothing. We know it's not doing nothing now. It's just a church. It's just a church. And we have all these churches on every corner, all over America, and look at the condition. Just a place to go to feel good. And if you don't church, you can go to the strip club. You can go to the prostitution house. Weed is legal now. You can go down to the, smoke you some weed at the, at the dispensary, at the, at the weed house. That's all America is. Dump things. Religious, zealous addicts. Porn addicts. Sex addicts. They get, a, they get addiction off everything. You can even get addicted drinking water. Did you know that? Tracy, did you know that? You can get high drinking water. That's all this country is. Pleasure seekers. That's all these folks do. Seek pleasure. Something to make them feel good. A law came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad to save us and we from the tribe of Shabbat. Feel good garbage from 1930. This is 2024. These children don't give a damn about them. They crazy as hell. And they come from these people's houses. It don't mean nothing. It has no effect. Except probably make them more crazy. And they want to blame everybody. Except themselves. Ain't nothing wrong with them. And they got in their mind. He, Tracy... I mean, Tracy, uh, lunch break says the teacher still stands strong today. <laughs> Woo! The teaching, the belief still stands strong until Minister Farrakhan died. It's all going to fall apart. When Minister Farrakhan died. He's the only reason why it got to the point that it did. Because of Minister Farrakhan. And it's not really because of the teaching. They like he's a good preacher. And when he died. All of it going to fall down. That nation of Islam stuff. It's over. With that said again. I listened to this reparation conference and they don't they don't know they don't know what they're doing. They ju they just don't know. How are you going to go to the United Nations and you have no agenda? You're not clear, you're not specific about nothing, and then you add all these other folks. We are Afro descendants or whatever it is. And all of the we're, all, we're not the same. I don't want to be part of that because I don't I don't want no foreigners. Already, how are you going to embrace foreigners and you can't even get your own black American people that was born right here in America? You can't get us together. You gonna run around here and try to get all these other, that don't even make no sense to me. How you gonna clean somebody else's house and yours still dirty? I'm concerned with my own house. My neighbor don't care if my grass never get cut. They just call the city. Hey, you got a got an idiot that don't want to cut his grass. 
He's only concerned with his grass, his family going back and forth. He's not concerned with my grass and my family going back and forth. Why should we get involved with these other folks unless we cut each other's grass? And it's very few neighbors that do that. I cut my grass, you cut your grass. I walk my dog, make sure my dog don't poo-poo on my neighbor's grass. That's how things go. You have to take care of yourself first. Now, when you do the neighborly thing, you see your, your neighbor can't get their car started. I have a little mechanical knowledge. Hey, neighbor, you, you, you can't get your car started? Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it. Let me see if I can help. But we should be concerned with ourselves first. We always concerned with other folks. We need to be concerned with ourselves for a while. Take care of yourself for a while. I'm going to say this in conclusion. That's what's wrong with some of these housewives. It gets to the point they give their all to their husband and their children. They don't give nothing to themselves. And they suffer for it. You got to take care of yourself. You got to love yourself. We got to take care of ourselves here first. How you going to call somebody an afro sendendent, whatever? Nobody never asks us nothing. You, you, are, you are a black Muslim. You are a Hebrew Israelite. You, everybody going to tell us who we are. They don't ask us nothing. We gonna represent black people in America for rep. How you gonna represent black people? You ain't ask us. You ain't ask black folks nothing. One of the first things that's very important in our vision called the Mississippi campaign. We gotta ask the people, not just go out here and try and try to do something and say this is what black people need to do. No, no, no. We are asking the people, we are proposing this to the people and let them decide. So when we do this, when you're acting, when you act on this, it's because this is, this is what the people, the majority of the people, this is what they want. The minorities don't give a damn. They just gonna have to go for the ride. That's how things go. If the majority of the people, black folks, soul brothers and sisters in this country wanted to get on board the soul train, the minority don't have a choice. They are going to go wherever the majority go, whatever the majority to decide. And you will look stupid in this case if your happy ass go any other way. You will look stupid. But of course, see some people, just idiots, they're going to have to see a little bit more. And when you when that when you see that success start coming, when you see the benefits, you're gonna feel stupid. But for me, I'm not going to tell you I told you so. I'm just gonna ignore it, keep working, bop, bop, bop. Let's keep doing this. I'm not even gonna tell you I told you so, you were stupid. I'm not even gonna do that. Because this is this is the time. What lunch break talking about. That's over. That's done. This is a new time. A new man. A new woman. A new idea. A new mindset. It's got to be new. And even in your scriptures, it talks about the heaven. It talks about a new heaven and a new earth. And the former thing shall pass away. Those are the former things. And for our brother or sister, I don't know whether you male or female, Lunch Break Chronicles, for you, 
The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches that the Islam that you have will not go into the hereafter, including the nation of Islam teachings. It will not go into the, into the hereafter because you don't need it no more. Those things, these things are for helping you to get there, to qualify. So you don't need that no more. So what's on the what's what's gonna be in the hereafter? I'm gonna tell you what's in the hereafter. The acceptance of reality. No more, no less. You done done all this fighting, all this believing, and you're gonna end up like Angel Stump Up Seven. <laughs> Ain't that a blip? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Ain't that a, you gonna say, ain't this a blip? <laughs> Just to end up like me. Wow. Thank you, Lunch Break Chronicles. Thank you for those in the sky. Thank you, Brother Tracy. Thank you for everybody uh, listening to this broadcast. Shout out to our Facebook. We are simulcasting on uh, Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Facebook, we also simulcasting on um, Angel Snuff Number 7 YouTube channel. And of course, this is the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry YouTube channel. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you, Lunch Break Chronicles. You have the mindset that we need. You are my Muslim brother. And I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that I don't upset you. You have the mindset that we need. It don't make any difference. I mean, you, we can believe whatever we want to. And you know I don't mean nobody no harm. I want us to be a winner. I want us to win. I want us to get out of this condition once and for all. And see, what a lot of folks don't understand, I never say stop believing in whatever you believe in. What I'm saying is that we should come together, find a strategy, and I think that Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign is that strategy. Find your place, find our places, help get the bugs out of it, and let's go forward. And it can produce the things that we claim that we want. I know it will. Because everybody can fit. There's a place for everybody. I don't know everything. But I know if we bring our talents together, we can get the job done. And you don't have to worry about fighting over religion because religion has nothing to, to do with anything. When I was listening to this reparation thing, they kept talking about Islam and Elijah Muhammad. What they have, what they have to do with, with reparation? Everybody's not a Muslim. Nobody don't care about all that stuff. Or you, you just want the credit. See what Allah do? So you giving the credit to Allah. The Christians say, I don't want to do with that. I'm not giving. A, I'm not giving no Allah no credit. Mississippi campaign. There's no God in, God involved. Now there are those who. Hate Angel Snub Number Seven, which I've never done nothing to none of these people. They just don't like the way I talk and what I believe or what I know. I don't want to give him no credit. I don't want him. Well, we're going to stay exactly where we're at. So why are we complaining? Just be happy being a damn slave. It's simple as that. Go to church, go to the mosque, go to the liquor store, go to the whole house, whatever. Just happy, happy being the slave that we are. And you're going to stay that way because you don't deserve no better. That's why you're in the condition that you're in. Because you don't deserve no better. And I don't care how much you talk until you do the right thing, until you take the appropriate action, Nothing's going to change, no matter how you talk 
or what you think you know, it's not going to change. And you can disagree with me all you want to. Tomorrow, you're going to be in the same condition and the next day and next year and the year after until you change how you think and how you look at things. You're going to stay right here. It's already proven itself. What how I gotta say this. I need to get out of here. Look, this is 2024. What have you accomplished going all the way back to 2014? That's 10 years. There's no <laughs> there's no debate, there's no argument, history. Let's break chronicles. Let's go back to 2014. What has the nation of Islam done? Malcolm is not here. Wallace, Wallace, Wallace D. Muhammad is not here. Let's go back to 2014. It's 2024. What has the nation of Islam done within the last 10 years? That has nothing to do with me. Nothing. You can't accomplish nothing. Because you're doing the wrong thing. It's not going to produce nothing. That's not my fault. I'm telling you what the problem is. You can put all this blackity black stuff together. And let's go back to 2014. I'm not talking about the nation of Islam. I'm talking about all the blackity black Pan African, the Hebrew Israelites, whatever you want to put all this blackity black stuff together and let's go back to 2014. What has it produced for us? Even for them. I'm not talking about for the 40 million soul brothers and sisters in this country. I'm just talking about just for them. It has not produced anything. You're not answering my question, lunch break. I'm saying, what have you done? What has the nation of Islam, whatever it is that you think is real, what have they produced going back to 2014? For them, I'm not even talking about, because I know you ain't done nothing for 40 million black people in this country. What have they done for themselves? You got a little, you got a little garden in your backyard? You got some chickens, a few chickens, producing nothing. Because you don't have the right mindset. You don't have the right strategy. You don't know what you're doing. You're still trying to, you're still trying to do stuff from 1930. This is 2024. Doing for yourself don't help 40 million people. Everybody cannot do for themselves. Everybody don't even have a house. Everybody don't even have a backyard. You can't, you limited what you do. This civilization take, they took all the different lands away from us. We can't even begin to try to live independently. Because you need land. All of us deserve a certain amount of land ourselves. There should not, nobody be homeless. They should have their own little plot of land they can have. Except reality, my friend, is much easier. On that note, let's get out of here. Again, thank you, Lunch Break. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for those out there in the skies, Facebook, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, until next time, as our ancestor, Dr. Cornelius, used to always say, as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and susu. We are all the 5,000. Sit down.